So this video is a week or so late. I was supposed to do this video two weeks ago. I didn't because we were having a bit of a heat wave and I thought, I don't want to bake in the middle of a heat wave. And I thought it would get cooler. And this week it's even hotter. So. Hello and welcome, this is Amy the Crafty Coilock and this is another installment of Crafty in the Kitchen. So with these videos I bake or make something that is Irish and sometimes put my own kind of twist on it and today is one of those days. So if you saw the poll that I did a couple of weeks ago in my community tab on my channel, I asked whether you wanted a Crafty in the Kitchen or Real Revolutionaries episode and it was touch and go there for a while, it was pretty neck and neck, but Crafty in the Kitchen won out. So I will be sharing some regional food today from Waterford. So the Waterford Blah is a regional bread roll, which dates back to the 17th century and it's a regional delicacy of the Southeast, specifically Waterford and some parts of Kilkenny and South Tipperary. It's a point of pride in my home county and it's also geographically protected. So you can only make Waterford Blas in Waterford. And seeing as I am in Waterford, I thought I would make one or a batch of them. If you make these anywhere else in the world, like Cornish pasties or champagne, you can't call them Cornish Bassey, Champagne, or in this case, Blas, because they're not being made in the region they're from. I have a private joke with one of my friends who lives in America, who did teach me how to make bread, like white bread, not soda bread. They asked me to teach them how to make water from Bla, and I, every time it comes up, I joke that I have to do count because you're over there. So when they come and visit, I can teach them properly how to make them here. So if you do follow this recipe and you're not in Waterford, technically you're just making a bread roll, but I'm going to share it anyway. So I'll talk more in a little bit while the dough is proving because there's like three proofs for this dough. So I have plenty of time to talk about the history, productive status, and the etymology of the word blah. But I'm going to just dive right into the recipe now. It takes an hour to prove the first time, about 30 minutes the second time, and another 30 minutes before they go in the oven. So this is going to be a two to three hour process. The recipe itself that I'm using is from Bigger Boulder Baking. So Gemma herself is from Ireland, from the Southeast, and her mother specifically is from Waterford. So her mother shared a recipe for Waterford Blas. It's the only recipe that I'm going to trust because it's from a Waterford person and also that I could actually find. It's a little bit of a like top secret thing and um, everyone has their own recipes. Each of the bakeries in Waterford and in the Waterford Blah Association, they keep the recipes, you know, protected and secret and it's a kind of passed down from generation to generation type of thing. So I'm using Gemma's recipe, but I am adapting it. And I'm adapting it to make it gluten-free. This may be considered blasphemy. Blasphemy. Uh, but if you have seen previous episodes of Crafty in the Kitchen, specifically the one on Irish stew, I did mention that I'm trying to be gluten-free. It's not going super well and it's, I find it quite difficult and also because I'm not a celiac I can eat gluten it doesn't make me super unwell thankfully but um it does cause different types of health problems for me so I try and avoid it and I have been really trying to avoid it as much as I can but I love blas and blas are full of gluten if you buy them in the from the bakeries fresh or uh, in the supermarket they're full of gluten. They're made from wheat flour. So I'm going to try this recipe. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it and I'm going to see how it goes. This is also my first time using active yeast. I don't really bake bread a lot. If I'm making bread, I'll make Irish soda bread. That's the bread I make because it's my favorite bread. Then I will buy my blouse. I will buy my blouse from the local bakery. And uh, when I used to live in Cork, I used to buy my blouse when I would come home at 
the weekend if I was visiting and then smuggle the blahs over the border back to Cork. Uh, but I found active yeast. I had been looking for active yeast because that friend I mentioned was teaching me how to make bread and I could only find the instant yeast that you just throw straight in the mixture, which is fine. That worked. The bread is very tasty, but I found it really hard to find active dry yeast. And I found some when we were on honeymoon, actually, in Galway, in a shop called Evergreen, which is actually where I get a lot of my gluten-free stuff. So evergreen.ie, if you're in Ireland, they're fantastic. They have such a great range of health food, not specifically just gluten-free, but lots of different health foods, different dietary requirements. It's a great place to go. But we just happened to be in Air Square, wandered into the shop, and I found the active yeast. I also found gluten-free macaroni, which is amazing. Um, but found the active yeast, bought it, then lost it for a couple of months. And this is when I started to realize that there was an issue with the expiry date. It was just in a bag from Honeymoon and then I couldn't find it. So I found it, so we're going to use it today. And this is my fuck it and find out face. Also, if during this video you hear birds, you hear people shouting the, or the sounds of a sports match commentary. I'm sorry. I have the windows open. It's very warm. It's like 30 degrees. It's too warm for Ireland. I'm not able for it. So it's very, very warm. So I have windows open. So they're maybe background noise. There's also cats running around into the background. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is measure out the warm water. So it's 142 milliliters of warm water for the yeast. So that is the warm water. And then into the warm water, we're going to put a tiny bit of sugar. Just put a small spoon of sugar. I'm using caster sugar, but any type of sugar is fine. So that's the sugar. And then we are going to put in one and a half teaspoons of the active dry yeast. I do like the smell of yeast, so it's nice. So one. And a half. So I'll stir that there and leave that to the side for five minutes. And then it's supposed to get this bubble, bubbly stuff on the top. So let's hope that works. Now I'm going to measure out the flour. So there's so much flour in this recipe, like so much flour. So not only do you have the flour that goes into the actual mixture, but you also have the flour that is used to dust the top. So you have to be very liberal with your flour usage. So we are going to put 780 grams of white bread flour is in the recipe. So I'm using this gluten-free white bread flour. Now this is a mixture of rice, tapioca, and potato flour. It also has xanthan gum, which is pickler as well, that's put into or can be added to gluten-free flour. I'm going to use this and hopefully it works. I didn't want to use a regular gluten-free white flour, like plain or self-raising. I wanted to get something that was specifically for white bread. So here we go. I have one kg here, so most of the kg is put in. I put too much in. I have a sieve sitting right there. And I did not put sieve. I did not put flour into the sieve. So now I have to take it out of the bowl into a different bowl, sieve it in so it's not lumpy. I thought to use the sip. A little bit of a basting confession. I very rarely actually says my flower. But I'm going to today. But I very rarely sip it. I don't know what. Um, but I also never get lumps. I never get weird lumps in my baking because I use my chip. Okay. So flour everywhere, but I'm going to get used to that today. 
So we have that there. We're going to put in a pinch of salt. So I'm going to put in a couple of turns of salt. And now my trusty stand mixer that I got recently or a couple of months ago now in the middle aisle at Aldi because my previous stand mixer, which I had also got at Aldi like 10 years ago, finally started to wear out the motor. So I got this great stand mixer with a dough hook this time. So I'm going to be using this because I can and it's more convenient. You can definitely mix the wet into dry ingredients with a whisk or a spoon or your hand, whatever is easiest for you. I'm just going to use the dough whisk because that's what's easiest for me. I'm going to pop this up. So it's been about five minutes. You can see the active yeast. It's kind of a darker biscuity color underneath, like a more off-white and then it's kind of a, like a beer foam head here. So I think that's active enough. I'm just going to swirl it around. And maybe I should actually stir it with a spoon. Yeah, it seems to be nice and activated and it smells yeasty. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in here. And I'm also going to put down the mixer and put it on a very... I'm going to switch it on with the wall first. I'm going to put it on the slowest setting and add the yeasty water. And then I need to have 300 milliliters of extra just general room temperature cold water to add into it as well as it goes. Depending on how the dough is coming together, you don't want it too wet. You just want a general bread dough with it. So I will add that ever so often as well, just to incorporate it better. And then once that's done, it needs to knead for five minutes. So again, I'm just going to, once I get a nice clean bottom on the bowl, I'm just going to let it knead with the dough hook for a further five minutes. touch and go there for a minute but I have a tiny bit of water left over from the extra 300 milliliters and it has come together very nicely in the bowl so I'll just lift it up so it has all come together in the bowl um it's um yep it's it's bread dough so I'm going to leave that for another five minutes um just to roll around on the dough hook and yeah we'll see how it is then after that take the dough hook oh that friend that told me had a big bread teach me about the elasticity thing that's when there's gluten and I think this is as this is as good as it's gonna get um, I'm gonna take it out now and it needs to go into a bowl another bowl to prove for one hour while that was kneading I prepped this bowl this is my shepherd's pie dish and just this last bowl dish have a lid on it or for it and I'm just going to put I'm going to put the dough it's not super sticky at all um, but it's also not super dry it's just a little bit 
wet, but it's it feels like it feels like the last time I made white bread. It feels like bread dough, so that's good. Um, so I'm gonna just throw it in there and leave it to proof for an hour. <coughs> so I'm just gonna leave that in there. I'm going to throw a tea towel over it. It has the cover of the lid on it, but I'm throwing the tea towel over it so that I'm not obsessing over it for the next hour, checking it every fight. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I am now gonna go and do some editing of another video that I did earlier this week. It was an interview. So I will come back to this in an hour. One hour later. I've just turned around to check on how that's proofing. And I found this little kitty cat on the counter where he's not supposed to be. What are you doing? What are you doing? You watching the birdies? Birdies outside? It's impossible to keep them off everything. They know they're not allowed on the counters, but does that matter? Does it heck? So I'm about to check this. I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm going to check it anyway. Okay, so the moment of truth. So it's definitely risen, but it hasn't risen as much as I was expecting. Now that might be due to the gluten. I, I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knock it out and then leave it to prove for 30 minutes. I will see what happens. So knock the air out of it again. Um, cover it back over. I'm gonna cover it back over and um, just leave it for half an hour. So while that's proving for the second proof for 30 minutes, I'm going to talk about the history of the blah. So as I said before, the history of the blah dates back to the 17th century when the Huguenots arrived in Ireland. There's a few crows outside at the moment. It's about 10 of them are in the garden at the moment. There's always crows in my garden. So as I said at the start of the video, the Waterford Blah dates back to the late 17th century when the Huguenots arrived in Waterford, or in Ireland generally. In 1685, a large amount of these French Protestants were exiled from France and they sought refuge wherever they could. And many of them ended up in England and Ireland. Waterford in particular became an attractive place for Huguenots to go because of the ease of access, there was a port, there was easy travel from Waterford to other ports in both England and Europe. Should the opportunity arise for them to be able to go back home, that would be easily arranged. Waterford also had a very active port with a lot of trading going on and that allowed for them to pursue economic endeavours as well. At the time, and generally in the medieval period, Waterford was a very busy trading hotspot. Leather, wheat, flour, butter, and lots of other agricultural produce was shipped from Waterford to both England and continental Europe, specifically and mainly France, Spain, and Italy. One specific set of Huguenots set up a bakery in Waterford in 1702, and from there they made lots of bread and other things that you make in a bakery. They were essentially setting up to feed their own families and their community. And it's thought through oral tradition and kind of local folklore that the blahs that we know today derived from offcuts of bread dough. So they would make batch baking of offcuts of bread dough to use up all the dough so there wasn't any waste. Fast forward 100 years later, and Ignatius Rice, who founded the Christian Brothers, set up a bakery himself in 1802. He set up both a bakery and tailor shop in Mount Sion and began to make the bread rolls. These bread rolls specifically became... Hey, you're not allowed up here. Do you want to learn about blahs? <laughs> yeah. 
the bread rolls became very popular with the poor and economically disadvantaged in the community. And with their popularity, soon other bakers also began to make them. Okay, there's stuff like this. And then very soon, it came to a point where 18,000 blahs were being made every day. Okay, you were not allowed. No. You leave the birdies alone. Okay. So currently, the people of Waterford eat around 10 to 12,000 blahs a day. And not only are they produced for people in Waterford, but they're also sold in other parts of the country as well. And sometimes you may see them pop up on, and sometimes you may see them pop up on different menus and restaurants. I was in Drogheda about 10 years ago and on the menu for the D Hotel at the time they had specifically the Waterford Blah was on one of their menu items. Then in 2013, the Waterford Blah received the PGI status. PGI stands for Protected Geographical Indication and effectively brands the item of food as a heritage item and basically says if it's not made where this geographically should be taking place, it's not authentic. So as I was saying before, like the Cornish pasty or champagne, Waterford Blas need to be made in Waterford with the registered bakeries. This essentially means that Waterford Blas need to be made by specialist bakers in Waterford. So just in case my Blas didn't turn out and don't turn out to be actually edible or nice, I wanted to show you what actual Blas look like that you can get here in Waterford. So this is a pack of six that I opened yesterday and I had two. But these are from Walsh's Bakehouse in Waterford and they are vegetarian friendly because we saw the ingredients that go into them. There's no eggs, there's no milk, it's just flour, yeast and water. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. From Walsh's Bakehouse established over a hundred years ago in 1921, there's a pack of six blahs shown here. Traditional breakfast blah with the egg, pudding and rashers of bacon. And it says, traditionally made with the finest ingredients for the true taste of Waterford. Unique to County Waterford. It also has the little protected geographical indication badge on it as well. So you know they're made of Waterford. And yeah, so these are blahs. So they are batch baked bread, so I'm just going to take out two. And they are so soft. They're quite dense as well. Um, they usually come in a pack of six. They are super floury. You can pretty much eat them with anything. Typically, you would have either bacon or sausage in them if it's for breakfast. You can use them as burger buns. I've used them as burger buns before. Sometimes I'll cut up like Frankfurter hot dogs and put them in with some coleslaw, but pretty much a staple, a lunch box or lunch for school time, or even just if you're an adult and you like blouse and you want to have them for lunch, would be to have it with just butter and ham. But because of the method of moving and that they're quite, they're quite full of yeast, they're quite dense. Now, my husband is from Cork and he does not get the blah thing at all. I think you, you have to be from Waterford, maybe, or maybe, maybe people outside Waterford also really like them, but he just, he does not get it. He's a Cork man, he does not get it. He doesn't like how dense it is. He calls it undercooked bread which it's not, it is cooked through. It's just the proving and the yeast element of it means that the texture of the bread itself is quite dense. In true branded fashion, I have put a lot of butter on these. I'm going to go in now with my ham. So I'm going to fold the ham in quarters. And there you go.
and you do get covered in white flour. But it's so worth it and kind of look a little bit dodgy, just. But the flour is a very big part of the bath. Instead of having water or like a glaze or even water sprayed on the rolls before they go in the oven to give them a kind of crispy brown sort of look, Waterford baths are liberally dusted with lots and lots and lots of flour and even underneath there's flour on them. There's just, they're just covered in flour. And that may be why they're called blahs. So it is believed that the word blah was derived from French. And there's a couple of different theories of exactly where this came from. One theory is that the Huguenots would have brought over an old French word, blad, which is B-L-A-A-D, and that's an old French word for flower. Or very simply, the French word for white, because they have this white appearance and there's a lot of white flower in them. The French word for white is blanc, and blanc to a French ear would mean white, but it's very possible that in Waterford it was heard as blah, and now we have blahs. So that is how the blah came to be. And I really hope mine turn out okay. If they don't, I do have these gluten filled ones here to eat. I just will be paying for it tomorrow. So I have another 10 to 15 minutes left on the second proof. So I'm going to tidy up here and get ready to cut them into the 12 individual little balls that they're going to be. And I'm also going to flower my tin. Few moments later. I'm going to use the small sieve because it's a bit more precise. Another reason I don't usually bake with yeast or with things that have to prove. That's why I like Irish soda bread. You just mix it and then throw it in the oven because I'm too impatient for proving. Can you see this little kitty here? Are you very warm? I forget if someone's giving out. You okay? Oh, you know what the birdies did? And the birdies outside? You're not getting on the counter. I just seen this. Okay, someone's cutting their grass. So it was my window. I can't really do anything about the noise of the lawnmower if it's coming through in the video. I don't know. I won't know until I watch this back. But I can't do anything about it because the proving's over. So I need to just roll with it. Seems to have stopped for a second. It'll probably start again in a minute. Okay. So, it is the moment of truth. Okay. It has a reason more. You can see the air bubbles in it. The to have a reason more on the second proof. So, I'm going to squash it down again. Uh, I'm going to tip it out. Okay. Squash it down. All right, I'm gonna just roll it into like a sausage shape um, onto my liberally flowered countertop. So I have one long sausage of dough. Okay, now what I'm gonna do out of my way and I'm going to cut it into 12 
equal because I like when things are uniform, but clouds don't need to be uniform. They don't need to all be the exact same size. Uh, I'm just pedantic. So I'm gonna cut it into half first, then each half third. approximately and then each third half one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve great I have one very small one put the end off another one all right now I'm just gonna roll them into balls so so you're just gonna be rolled into balls and then I will leave them there. Yeah, these are definitely not uniform in size. And uh, now they're going to go on to baking tray for the third and final proof. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so scared about this. Um, we don't put the flour on to bake until they've had their final proof. So they're going to go over here for their final proof. Uh, what I'm going to do is just put some cling film on them and then put the tea towel over the cling film. Tea towel on. And I'm going to check back in half an hour. Eventually. So it has not been 30 minutes. It's actually been an Closer to an hour, just shy of an hour, like 55 minutes. Because I went back and I just double checked the recipe to make sure, actually to see what temperature the oven needed to be at. And I noticed that the third proof was actually supposed to be 45 minutes to an hour. So because it hadn't risen a lot much and because there were kind of gaps on the tray before I put it away to prove, I wanted to give it a chance to kind of puff up. Uh, I don't know. I This is my first time working with this kind of yeast, so I have no fucking idea. But the oven is preheating. I'm going to reveal this now. Um, I can see though from like just looking at the, the top of the tea towel that I can see little bolts, like a little small mountain range. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I mean, okay, they're not awful, but um, I would like them to be bigger. So I'm just going to scooch them closer to each other so that they have a chance to kind of really batch bake when they're in the oven. Um, just, you know, just to give them a chance and um, to kind of really get that shape, even if they're not all uniform. So they need to bake for 25 to 30 minutes at 210 degrees Celsius. I will link Gemma's uh, Bigger Boulder Baking recipe down below if you want to make it you follow Gemma's recipe and make it with gluten full flour. I'm just making it with gluten free flour. So it's basically that recipe that I followed. I just used gluten free bread flour instead of regular bread flour. So you can try it at home. She has all the information. She has a big cup as well as grams and she has it fully done out like that. So you can follow that. If you do want to try these at home, I don't know if this is going to be a disaster or not, but I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to bake it. I wasn't expecting it to be as nice as generationally practiced full of gluten actual blas made by professional bakers um and also i'm a complete i'm not even not a professional baker i'm like completely new to baking this type of bread unless you can't cake as bread <laughs> but i don't so i'm much more used to making cakes and then as i said my irish soda bread is so i don't know how this is going to turn out but I've had fun. <laughs> so yeah, before they go in the oven though, they do need to get 
dusted, liberally covered in flowers. So where is the flower? Is that too much? Well, maybe it's not enough. I'm just going to cover them. Just absolutely cover them in flower. I would actually really love to go to the production kitchens that make glass just to see um, what they're like. So yeah, I would, I'm, I may reach out to one of the local bakeries to see if they let me come along. Um, so if you would like to see that, actually just put a comment, either comment or like tick the like button. And I, if I get loads of likes, then that might, that will incentivize me to actually contact the bakery to go get them, go get them looked at and like the whole production line kind of looked at. So if you, if you would like to see that, if you would like to see me go to a Waterford local bakery, hit the like button and I'll try and make that happen. I'll at least ask about it. I will inquire about it. I think that would be interesting. I've probably put a bit too much flour on these, but they are like liberally dusted there. So I guess I'm just going to bake them. So 25 minutes, I'll check on them again. Gonna skewer test them. The skewer is coming out clean, but they're rock hard. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to like fully work, but I didn't think this was going to happen. <laughs> Oh dear, it's probably going to be quite raw inside. They're raw in the middle. Or they look raw in the middle. So this was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> Maybe it was the gluten. Maybe you have to use gluten flour. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's th that's the magic of glass. Whatever it is, this did not work, which is fine. That's, that's ground I have. I have blas there. I'm glad I bought the blas now so that I could actually show them what they were supposed to look like and the texture and stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try this again. What I might do is try it with gluten flour and see if that works. And then if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board completely and try and find out what happened here. That's a bit disappointing. Some very disappointing, but it is disappointing. <sighs> okay well that is it for this video <laughs> um if you like this video give it a thumbs up and it helps boost the channel and helps boost the video i really did hope that the video was interesting i've always found the history of these regional bread rolls fascinating ever since i learned the story and yeah it's nice to be able to share something from my region in Waterford and, you know, something that is really delicious when it's baked by professionals, I guess. 
If you like this content, please check out some of my other videos. I have a playlist called Crafty in the Kitchen where I've shared a few recipes now at this stage. And I will be sharing many more. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And slog a full, I will see you soon.